Hello everyone, have you ever wondered how these platforms as a service work where you can spin up a seemingly endless amount of stuff that then gets charged to your credit card each month? Well, this isn't exactly how it works, but in this video I'm going to be covering how you can set up a container as a service or platform as a service hosting service, a bit weird, uh, by uh, basically letting you create a scaffold where we say something like hello world. We give it a random port, let's say 4007. We click create container, and then this creates a container for our, I guess, customer. They can then run the Docker container. You'll see over here, it spins something up in port 4007. And over here, we store the name, which is heuristic Valhard, uh, and the container status of running. We can go over to localhost port 5 for 4007, and now you can see we have to run our pending migrations. After we do that, we have a temporary app that uh, has a database attached to it, etc. Of course, I'm not persisting the database. I'm not migrating the database initially because this is just for demo purposes. You could have this run whatever container you want. Uh, but over here, what I can now do is I can click stop container. You can see our status changed to exited our button change back to run and over here you can see it has exited the container if i now come over to port 4007 and try to refresh it will just time out and i can come over here and i can click run docker but this is actually going to start that same container again you could of course uh, allow it to instead create a new container again but here we just restart the heuristic one and now if i come back over to port 4007 the database is still here because i'm still running that old container but i'm not mounting a volume so like if i uh, delete this uh, this data is gone forever uh, but okay so that's what we're going to do here to actually do this we're going to go ahead and cd out of this directory we're going to make a new directory i'm going to call this the video directory cd into video and i'm going to do two things first one's going to be a rails new and i need to call this something now i'm just going to call this rails app this will be the application that acts as our platform as a service thing. Again, I'm being pretty generous there because it's got like three commands in it. Uh, so it's really not a platform as a service and it's kind of hacked together, but I do think it's fun to do these little thought experiments. So now we have this Rails app. Let's go ahead and let's do another one. We'll say Rails new, and this one will be our Docker app. And this one we need to pass in dash dash main because I'm using Rails 7.1 because that already has a Docker file inside of it. 7.1 isn't released as of the time of this recording, but uh, by passing in dash dash main, I can grab the latest version of Rails from the GitHub repo or whatever's in the main branch. And that allows it to pull that Docker file for us, which is pretty cool. So now I have two terminals open here. The first one is going to be uh, inside of the video and then inside of the Docker app. This is just because we have to do some Docker build commands. Those will take a while. So I run that in one window and then in the other one, we will go ahead and run the uh, the Rails app stuff. So over here, I have both folders already open inside of VS Code. Now I'm going to go ahead and CD into the Rails app. Okay, so in the Docker app, we need to come into the Docker file, which is right here. It has a whole bunch of stuff for us out of the box where it sets everything up. There's a couple things we want to change. One is the Rails environment. I'm going to change this to development. Uh, that way I don't have to pass in the keys or anything to set this up. Then down here, we want to change this expose to 3001 because I like showing you how to set these things up. Uh, and then we're going to change the Rails command uh, because we're using, or at least I'm using WSL. I'm gonna change the Rails command here to still be bin slash Rails with server, but then I pass in a dash P of 3001, which you'll notice matches this one. And then I bind it to 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 because localhost won't work unless we bind it to this IP address. After we do this, we can then go to localhost just like we normally would and access our Docker containers. At this point, you need to check if your Docker network exists. In my case, uh, I can do a Docker network LS and you can see I already have a Rails network set up here with a bridge. If you don't have one, just go ahead and do a Docker network create and then name it whatever you want. Docker network create Rails 2, for example. And now if I do a Docker network LS, you'll see that Rails 2 is also set to bridge. Just remember what you called yours and then you're pretty much good to go. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we need to do a Docker and uh, let me zoom in a bit, a Docker build command. We pass in a dot here because we're inside of the Docker app directory, which is this one. 
the dot tells it which directory the Docker file is in. So it knows it's in this Docker app directory. So it looks for a Docker file, finds it, and then it builds it based on these instructions. I then pass in a dash T with a rail seven. This is to tag this image as rail seven. You can see over here, I already have a rail seven image, but the reason why we tag it is because then it has a name that we can reference later. So we go ahead and we run that. All right, cool. So that's building. Now let's come over to uh, our actual rails app here. Inside of our actual Rails app, we need to do a couple things. One will be a scaffold. The scaffold will be for our containers where we give it a name, a port of type integer and a container name. I just gave it a name so there's other stuff for the user to input. It's really not that important. Okay, so now that we have that, let's do a db colon migrate real quick. And then let's come into the Rails app. Inside of the Rails app, let's come into config and routes.rb. Now in the routes, there's a couple things we have to set up. First, we have the containers. I want to set the root to be the uh, containers controller index action. I then need to do two different git commands. One is going to be to the uh, Docker controller, which we have to create. So let's do a Rails G controller Docker. Uh, one is going to be to the Docker controller and a run action that we have to make. And the other one's going to be to the Docker controller and a stop action that we're going to make. So these are both going to be to this controller. So let's go ahead and let's set those up real quick come into app controllers and the Docker controller. The reason why I didn't put this in the actual containers one is because to me, it makes more sense to separate this a little bit uh, just so that it's not all in one file. That said, I'm not doing best practices here. So this part is going to be all in one file, even though it is pretty gross. So what we're going to do here is when we create a new container, we're going to pass in a container ID. So when we call this run, it's going to be from the uh, app views containers and the container partial. Now inside of this container partial, it, there's a couple things we got to do. Uh, but the main things that we want to do are uh, a quick check to see if the container is running. Now there's a command we can do for this. In my case, I should already have some that are running. So let's come back over to this Docker app directory real quick. And in here we can run a Docker inspect dash F. We can then pass in this little uh, mustache.state.status bit, and then we can pass in a container name. So let's do this. Let's do this first one uh, with the pedantic underscore brat And you can see when I run that, it returns running. So just by doing that, we can get the container status. Now, again, not doing best practices here, but in this case, I'm just going to put this into the partial uh, and we'll just have this available to us wherever we run this. We then, with this, get back a string. What this actually returns is something along the lines of running uh, slash n. So what we also want to do here is at the end here or on a new line, we can get rid of that bit. I'm going to put on a new line so it's a bit more readable. We just have to do a container status equals container status dot chomp. You could also do a dot chomp on the end here. At a certain point, you do start making these lines a bit too long. Uh, okay, so now that we have that, we can check the container status. So we come down here, maybe below the name, we do a check if the container status is running, else we have to do something else, and then we can have our end right here. So if the container is running, we're going to do a link to that stop uh, Docker stop path, which is this Docker controller stop action. We then pass in the container ID, which is the container.id. We also can do something similar for running the Docker container, where we just say link to run Docker, Docker run path, we pass in the ID. There's other ways to do this, of course, but in this case, this is just what I threw together. Again, I make these in like 10 minutes, so bear with me. Uh, so now we can come down below this, where we have the uh, container name. I want to move the port below the name, uh, but where we have this uh, container name, we need to actually set this. Because you'll notice so far we haven't set this. So the way that we actually set it is in the Docker controller itself when we do the run command. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to start by getting the container uh, based on the container ID that we passed back. This you, of course, could put into like a set container before action, before action, uh, set container, right? And then you can come down here, do a private and then def set container at container equals that. And now you can just reference at container this whole time. 
it'll work pretty much the same way. Now that's going to, of course, require me to uh, refactor this a little bit as I go, so bear with me. But we can have a port, which is from the at container.port.2s. We can get a container name, which we can get from the container.container .container name. We can then check if the container exists or if the container name exists. If the container name exists, we'll do one thing else. We'll do something else. So if the name already exists, all we have to do is run a Docker start and then the container name command. So this is how we run it. We use these back ticks. These are on the tilde, which is the key next to the one on an American keyboard. I don't know where it is, uh, depending on where you live. But at this point, this should start the container. We can then redirect back to a fallback location of the root path with a notice that says container is running on port whatever. The port we grab from the at container.port. Of course, you want to sanitize this a bit more. Right now, we're just putting like random stuff in here, including the container. You could escape this, you could blow up your whole system, but you get the idea. Uh, this is just how you would run these Docker commands. Uh, if we don't have a container name already, we can just come in here and we can do something silly like a Docker run. We pass in a dash D, a dash P, pass in the port, which is our port that the user wants to visit. So this is the port where if this is like 4007, you go to localhost port 4007. But we have to match that up to 3001 inside of our Docker file here where we set that. So that's where we match that. We then have to set our dash dash network, which in my case, I named it Rails, but I, the example I gave you was Rails 2 and whatever you named yours, you wanna make sure it's the same. And then we have to use the image name, which is what we built over here when we ran the, uh, whatever it was, docker build dot dash T command. So this is our image name. That needs to be the last thing in here. So that's how we can run the container. Now we need to figure out how we can get the container ID. Pretty simple. You can just run a quick little docker run dot strip because this will return back some information for us. With that, we can then run that docker inspect command here. Docker inspect with a format of name container dot strip. It gives us our container name. However, there is a leading slash. So we have to get rid of that leading slash. So we run a container name and we grab this, this section from it if it has the leading slash. We then have to save the name to the model, which of course uh, I just realized we have to come in here and update all of these to use at container instead of just container. Uh, so that's going to be this one. It's going to be the uh, container here. Uh, and I think that's it maybe. So that should give us the, uh, the stuff we need. Finally, what we want to do is a redirect back uh, to a fallback location of the root path they notice that the container is running on port, whatever. Okay, so now that we have all of this, we have our start action here. Let's go ahead and let's deal with our stop one because we're already here, we might as well. The stop one's gonna look very similar. In fact, you could probably abstract a lot of this out into a just quick little helper. Uh, but we have the container name is at container.container name again. We can then do a Docker stop for the container name. We don't have to check if it exists. It should exist if we've already started one. And then we can redirect to a fallback location of the root path with a notice that it has stopped. That's effectively it for our Docker controller. We have the start and the start, uh, the start and the stop action. Sorry. If you want to create a new container every time you run this, you just put this Docker run command in here and forget about the container name. In fact, you could just get rid of this entire thing and only leave this section down here. It would work. The only thing is you might want to clean up your old containers uh, by pruning the old containers, right? Okay, so that's that. Now we have the ability to start and stop these. Uh, the only other thing we really need to do now is actually display the status. We can display the status just by, let's do, I don't know, right here. We can say, all right, you want to display it. Here is your container status, which we're grabbing up here inside of our partial. Again, this isn't clean code, but you get the idea. Uh, the only other thing we should really do is inside of this other Docker app, let's do a Rails G scaffold post, the title and a body of type text. And then we can do a Rails DB colon migrate. And then we can do another Docker build uh, and we can just build this real quick. Let's now come over to our main Rails app and run a Rails S. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop all of these uh, or delete all of these uh, Docker containers that we already had open here. Uh, just so that you don't think that I'm running these old existing ones. Although, I mean, why would I make this up? It'd be kind of weird. 
Uh, but okay, let's come over here and let's refresh. Let's go to localhost port 3000. We can create a new container, call it test, give it a name of 3001. And a, ooh, this is a bit tricky. We already have the container name field here. So what we're gonna do is in this case, just come into our form for the, oops, not for that. We need to come into our form for the containers and inside of our container form where we uh, have the, where is it? Where we have the container name. We'll just go ahead and we'll get rid of that. Now, if we come in here and refresh, we can say test case for the name, a port of 3001, and we can click create container. You can see our name is right here. Nothing else has been populated yet. So let's go ahead and let's click run Docker container or run Docker. You can see that started something up. Now, if we come over here, uh, we can see that this is the Lucid or whatever it is called. Uh, and then we can come over to our port section right here, click on this, and this should open it up in a browser on localhost port 3001. So now we have this, let's come over to slash posts. Uh, oops, slash posts, there we go. Oh, I think it was trying to go to an HTTPS location. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so that's that's my bad. It's just caching HTTPS. Uh, let me click on new post, test and case. And now we can see that this is working inside of our Docker container. Let's come over here and let's stop the container. That worked. It's now changed to exited, which means over here we can see this has been grayed out. And if we come into our terminal, uh, you'll see nothing really looks like it's happened here. If we refresh, and we click run container again. You can see that all of this gets set up again. This gets started. And now if I come over here and refresh, this should be up and running again with the same data. So yeah, there you go. It was a little bit, uh, it's a little bit thrown together, but uh, I think this is a really interesting like thought experiment project. I love doing these because it does get you to think how you would create a service like this. Uh, a couple things you would probably want to change. You'd want to change the uh, Docker commands to not take in raw data from the user. That's obviously pretty stupid. Uh, you would also want to not run these like in the same thread. You'd want to throw this into like a background job uh, and you'd want to pull it back from whatever, you know, whatever service you have. Uh, and then in your container partial, of course, you don't want to have this, this Docker inspect command at the top of your container partial. That's kind of silly. Uh, you'd probably want to run this stuff in the background as well. Maybe every like 30 seconds or whatever, just have a job that grabs this if the user's on the page or something. But yeah, uh, overall, I like doing this just because it sort of tells you how these businesses could set something like this up. You can vaguely say there's more sophistication behind it. Uh, like I don't think DigitalOcean just has this stuff set up like this, but you get the idea. Anyways, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully I will see you in the next one.